What is meal prep? What is batch cooking? And which one is good for you? Here's my personal point of view on this issue as someone who has been teaching and practicing um, meal planning, batch cooking, mostly batch cooking, not so much meal prep for the last seven to 10 years as a plant-based person. Meal prep to me is the practice of preparing your meals for the week, for example, by placing everything ready to go in usually matching containers, maybe they're divided even with all the components of each meal in the container, you pop that in the fridge and then when it's time to eat, it's just a matter of reheating the food that's in those containers all at once, probably in the microwave and you eat, off you go. That to me is meal prep. So opening your fridge and finding a collection of meals ready to eat, ready to reheat and all mixed together already. Batch cooking to me is different. When I talk about batch cooking, I talk about creating, cooking the building blocks of the meals for the week. So it involves deconstructing the different meals that are coming up and preparing in a batch, often on the weekend, for example, depending on your lifestyle, the different components. So take a very simple example. One of my favorite things, vegan spaghetti bolognese, okay? I will make the sauce and only the sauce on the weekend cook it all up and let it cool transfer it to containers refrigerate it maybe freeze some of it for later and then when it's let's say wednesday i will cook fresh pasta not pre-cooked pasta and add the reheated sauce on top and the benefit of that is also that the flavors within the sauce, within the vegan bolognese sauce, will be developing over two or three days that it spends in the fridge and it will just taste better the second day. Another example here would be the practically exact same thing with, let's say, chili or a curry or any kind of simmered dish. So soups, stews, sauces are favorite components to prepare in a batch cooking way because it's not that much more effort to make a big batch of them and to break it down into smaller containers. And also the taste gets better, it, the flavors develop, it keeps well, it's not like delicate lettuce, for example, that will lose its crunch over the course of several days. It will actually get better in the fridge to a point, of course, don't try to keep those things for more than a week. Personally, I much prefer the batch cooking approach. And by the way, there's other things you can batch cook. Of course, you can roast a lot of vegetables. You can mix some dressings, whole grains. Whole grains are the top item for me to batch cook. I will make a massive big pot, like four cups of brown rice on the weekend. I cook that, by the way, using the pasta method. There's details about that on my website if you're interested, but I make that big batch. There's no way, no way I would cook brown rice on a Tuesday night. Who's got time for that? But during my batch cooking session, it's not a big deal because I set it and forget it. It does its cooking after 22 minutes. I drain it, rinse it, let it steam off and it's done. And I have a big batch of brown rice. I can freeze it. It actually reheats, it thaws and reheats really well. And I read recently that there's a glycemic benefits to um, freezing and reheating the rice and also pasta, don't freeze pasta, but if it's refrigerated, apparently it's handled better by the body the next day. But I frankly prefer fresh pasta, not, you know, reheated pasta. And so batch cooking that way for me is beneficial because I'd rather have dinners that feel fresh, that feel like they've been just cooked um, with the components that are really prepared basically almost at the last minute. And that's true for, as I said, the pasta, even if, um, for example, once in a while, not often, but often, um, while well, my son prefers white rice. So if there's white rice involved, I will often do it at the last minute. Or noodles, like soba noodles or ramen noodles, you know, the good ramen noodles, not the 50 cent packages. They're not exactly the kind of thing you wanna be reheating. They're much better when they're fresh. And that's the way, in my opinion, to do it is to batch cook the components that are more complex, that involve chopping and 
keep the simple little bits for final assembly on the night of. Another good candidate for batch cooking is everything that goes in a bowl, in a vegan bowl. You know, you're going to have some whole grains. It can be, as I mentioned, brown rice, but it can be, for example, also quinoa or amaranth or barley or farro or wheat berries, all things that take a little bit of time to cook and that are less likely to be cooked on a weeknight at the last minute. The dressing, the sauce that will be involved, some roasted, I don't know, sweet potato cubes that will be easier to prepare ahead of time. You can just reheat them and you throw the bowl together at the last minute. So the, and of course, adding the greens that will be fresh, they will be just prepared. And that will make a much more appealing dinner. I'd say roasted vegetables to me, it's a little bit on the fence. In some uses, for example, if I'm going to add the roasted vegetables to paninis to make sandwiches, or if I'm going to put them as part of a pasta dish, it's fine to use roasted vegetables that I've roasted on the weekend and then reheat them. But sometimes it's really nice, much nicer to have freshly roasted vegetables, for example, in a bowl. So in the case of the bowl, if I've already cooked the whole grains, I've already mixed the dressing, I've already prepared something like maybe baked tofu as a protein dense food in there. Just roasting the vegetables at the last minute is not a big deal. Actually, you just chop a head of cauliflower, toss it with a bit of turmeric, salt, pepper, put it in the oven or even in the air fryer. And uh, while it's cooking, while it's roasting, you can do something else. You can do the dishes from the day. You can set the table. You can read a book. It's awesome. And so you have those fresh roasted vegetables, but you haven't had to prepare the entire thing. And that's the reason why I prefer batch cooking. If um, you're by yourself or for example, for lunches, if you're taking away lunches from home to work to school, well, meal prep is probably a great way to go because then you have your container, you can just pop it in the microwave at your place of work and you have a ready to go meal, that's fine. And it prevents you from having to scramble in the morning to prepare your lunches, that's great. But for me and my family, dinner is that little bit special meal that we like to have things that feel fresh, but there's not always the time to make everything from scratch right before dinner. And that's where the weekend batch cooking sessions come in. Another way to do batch cooking sessions, by the way, is to just double up. If you do happen to cook a stew, a curry, a big pot of soup on a weeknight, just make it bigger. It doesn't take twice the time to take twice as much soup. And then you can freeze the leftovers for later. Just make a note that when you do freeze thing, remember to label it and maybe even keep an inventory sheet on the front of your refrigerator, of your freezer, with what's in the freezer so that you remember to go dig out there the stuff that you need. I hope that this is helpful and that you will join me in batch cooking. It is a life-changing, life-saving even, practice to do this because it makes weeknights so much less stressful while still giving the opportunity of enjoying fresh dinners. I'll see you in the kitchen.